Hi, I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson, your host for Nova Science Now, where this season we're asking six big questions. On this episode, how does the brain work? To find out, I head to Las Vegas. Neil deGrasse Tyson! Where brain researchers are placing their bets on magic. That's a dang real fish, Neil. Some of the world's top magicians the ball. are making the mysteries behind our most powerful organ disappear. I saw it go over. I swear I saw it go over. The illusionists reveal their secrets. That motion will draw the eye. Giving us new insight into how our brain pays attention. This would be a major contribution to science from the magicians. Also, a magnetic wand. Oh, that was nice. That can control your body. Oh, wow. And your speech. It can turn a part of the brain up or down or temporarily turn it off. Could it even change the way you think? It's a remarkable thing that one can put something over somebody's head and modify the way they behave. And I've met some professors who are tough on their students, but this one gets the prize. You're dropped from a 150-foot tall tower in free fall backwards. This brain researcher isn't afraid to go to extremes to solve one of the biggest puzzles in science. Brains are like fingerprints, and they're slightly different in everybody. Especially when some of us see a whole other reality. A's are always red, and M's are green. How does the brain, with its hundreds of billions of neurons, put together reality for us? All that and more on this episode of NOVA Science Now. Funding for Nova Science Now is provided by... Everything we do, every thought we've ever had, is produced by the human brain. But exactly how it operates remains one of the biggest unsolved mysteries. And it seems the more we probe its inner workings, the more surprises we find. Here's one of the biggest surprises. As clever and as perceptive as the human brain can be, and as talented as it might be, it can still be fooled by a simple magic trick. Keep your eye on the ball, son. For centuries, magicians have intuitively taken advantage of the inner workings of our brains. Usually, they keep their tricks secret. But I met up with some magicians who were willing to come clean. Eyes on the ball, son. To help unlock hidden mysteries of how the brain really works. This one? Sure. Sorry. Welcome to Las Vegas, the entertainment capital of the world. I'm not here to get rich quick. Neil deGrasse Tyson, right this way. I've come to be tricked by some of the best magicians on earth. Now, in order to catch fish, you have to have the proper fishing pole, and you have to have the proper bait. <gasps> the Fig Newton. <laughs> With just a Fig Newton as bait, Mac King takes me fishing. You and I are fishing out here in midair, but we're not looking for just any fish. We're catching goldfish. Suddenly, a flicker of orange appears on our hook. Neil, hold that glass over here. Check him out. And voila! We've caught a goldfish. That's a dang real fish. It's real. It's real. Magic is a sophisticated art form practiced by seasoned professionals rule here in Las Vegas. who know exactly how to trick your brain. Whatever you catch, you got to eat. Oh. No, oh, he's still there. He's still there. So can the age-old art of magic shed light on how the brain works? With more than 100 billion nerve cells, each making thousands of intricate connections, the human brain a lump of tissue small enough to hold in your palm is so powerful it can contemplate the vastness of the universe. Yet, it can be fooled by the simplest coin trick. Meet Apollo Robbins. Stage name, Apollo the Gentleman Thief. A few years back, he embarrassed President Jimmy Carter's Secret Service agents when he picked their pockets during a visit to Las Vegas. Today, Apollo has agreed to share some of his secrets with me. 
First, he shows me a special motion he uses to distract his victims when he's picking their pockets. So when I go for a pocket and I'm coming out of it like this, that motion done in natural time will draw the eye a little bit I'm going to follow that hand out of my pocket. Yes. Even if that's just a decoy for me. Mm -hmm. And I have a second longer with this hand to do something else. According to Apollo, it's this curved motion that diverts my attention from what he's really doing, stealing something from my pocket, or making a coin disappear. Neuroscientists Susana Martinez Conde and Stephen Macknick have come to watch Apollo. They're hoping he can help them solve a fundamental mystery. How does the brain decide what to pay attention to? Neuroscientists know a lot about how the brain works. We know where the visual centers are, we know where the auditory centers are, but we don't really have a very good idea about attention and awareness yet. They decide to video Apollo using his curved motion to make a coin disappear. Back in their lab, they prepare test subjects to watch it. They fit them with this contraption equipped with tiny cameras aimed at their subject's eyes. We're measuring the eye position 500 or 1,000 times a second, and what we're analyzing is where are the eyes at every given moment of time in comparison to what's being presented on the screen. The experiment reveals their eyes follow the path of Apollo's hand, just as he predicted. I'm going to move my index finger from left to right, and I'm going to follow it with my eyes. What my eyes are doing right now is smooth pursuit. A smooth pursuit allows you to track a moving target. Vision is a coordinated effort between the eyes and the brain. When our eyes see an object, the light from its surface travels to the retina, where it's transformed into neural signals. These signals go to a part of the brain dedicated to vision. Here, we start to form an image. But we don't pay attention to everything we look at. How does the brain control what we focus on and what we don't? In a new study, Susana and Steven, working with Jose Manuel Alonso, found that when our eyes track something, like Apollo's curved motion, there's more than one type of brain cell at work one type of cell detects motion while the other suppresses the background. Your brain is actively suppressing the parts of the visual scene that you don't pay attention to. And this relates to what Apollo was telling us, that when you're tracking something that you ignore everything around it. These two types of neurons that we are beginning to understand could explain, you know, why magicians are so good at what they do. In another trick, I think I see a coin flying through the air, but it never lands. That was so, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you see the coin, the shininess flicking through the air. Uh -huh. You see the light glint off. I see it. Yeah. And then it disappears. Yeah, and I saw it go over. And yeah. you saw it go over. I swear I saw it yeah. go over. And it doesn't go over. I'm sure I saw Mac toss the coin. Why did I see something that didn't actually happen? Back at the lab, when volunteers watch the trick on a monitor, they're stumped just as I am. So Mac's creating this illusion of inferred motion. So you see this motion that didn't actually take place. Turns out our brain is sensitive, maybe too sensitive to motion. It's a survival mechanism. That motion detection, I mean, that's really a useful, useful brain skill. The fact that I detect motion even though it's not actually there. Yeah, you make these assumptions to ensure, you know, that you don't get hit by a spear coming from your left side. It's better to think there's a tiger moving in the brush and be wrong yeah. than to not notice it and get eaten. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> Sometimes even the most astute magicians, like the world-renowned Penny,